today we're going to have a real in-depth session on how to build the business. We're going to attempt to compress what we do in a 16-hour, two full-day workshops into basically about an hour and a half right now. So it's going to be a lot of information. It's also a little bit challenging because everyone comes to the table with different assets. You all come with a different starting place. Wherever you start at right now or whatever you're coming to the table with is going to give you a different tra trajectory of where you're going to get to and how long it's going to take to get there. So we're going to try and essentially put the pieces together from the beginning. So this applies if you're doing 20 million in sales or you just started and you're looking for your first 200 in sales. Is that fair? How many of you guys want to grow? How many of you want to, your exit plan is to give the business to your kids and sail off into the sunset? How many are going to make them buy it? They always appreciate things when they pay for them. You know that. All right. I have some of my team here with me as well. I have my husband and our VP of operations, Mr. Hickland, in the back. I have Jasmine Hernandez on the right-hand side. Jasmine is the account manager for this region, and I have our director of sales, Clay Howard, uh, as well as Scott. So Clay manages the entire United States, but he's located here in Arizona. Jasmine's located in California. Mike and I are located wherever the nearest hotel is for that particular event, nine months a year. And the rest of the year, we live on a houseboat, which happens to be three months in Seattle. I also have uh, Scott Smith, who's our video guy. So make sure you have time to meet with these guys while you're here. Today we're going to be talking essentially about how to take suspects, which every consumer is a suspect when they're first starting out, when they're looking. You guys are a suspect right now of me, right? And how do you convert them to prospects? How do you turn them into leads? How do you turn them into customers? And then how do you turn them into advocates for life? The first thing, the reason why you're here, is because education is critical to be able to do that. You must have clarity. Everyone in here walked into this room having some level of what they believe is their version of the truth about the internet, human beings, and digital marketing. I say their version of the truth because most people that speak about digital marketing, unless you were born and raised in it and live and breathe it day in and day out, it is too complex to process and be a subject matter expert as a business owner in heating and air conditioning and plumbing and electrical and everything else. And, oh, by the way, I'm also an expert at the internet and how it works, at the consumer buying process, at the technology devices that are used today and today out. Without clarity, the more discombobulated our thoughts are, the harder it is to focus on those high leverage activities that are going to help you gain momentum and progress to take you to the next level. Without clarity, I cannot focus. Without focus, I cannot execute. If you don't execute or if you delay execution, you will have a hard time winning. Some people wait to get started in this digital movement. Some people in this room started a long time ago and they're kicking some serious tail. It's difficult when the entry point is late. It's not getting easier. We have all these awesome humans who like fancy gadgets and then all of a sudden they're talking to their refrigerator or they're asking Alexa to schedule a meeting for them or they're saying, hey Google, what's the best AC repair company? In Phoenix, Arizona, with the best reviews, can you schedule the appointment, please? Can you make it for Monday at 1 o'clock? And yes, you can approve the invoice and payment. That's here now. If I talk about where we're headed, I'd be talking about augmented reality and virtual reality. But right now, humans are using devices to do a lot of their daily interactions, their daily tasks. Every time humans adopt new cool gadgets, your world as an entrepreneur and a business owner changes because you have to meet people where they are. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. So in everything that you do, if you can have a, a deep down desire to gain clarity, you can call it to get educated, go to classes, 
develop yourself, but gain clarity. Because most of the time, we as humans ask the wrong people for the right information. We ask broke Uncle Harry about websites or about money. He's not an index. You ask your aunt who's been divorced 10 times about marriage, not an index. We ask someone who's never built the business past one to build a website, not smart. Every one of us has to be very, very careful about the information we put in our brains because sometimes it's only the truth to someone else but not the truth. And that difference can cause massive swings in an entrepreneur's movement, either moving forward, gaining progress, or moving backwards. So during this class, hopefully we're going to have a lot of eye-opening moments where these little pieces of information start connecting and opening up a more truthful analysis of what it takes to compete and win in today's technical world. Our business, we've been focused on heating and air conditioning now for what, how many years? Eight? I think eight. And in our world, everything is about building a system to produce results. Systems can be improved. Systems can be measured. Systems can be modified, tweaked, enhanced. They're moldable, they're scalable, they're pliable. This is the 12-step roadmap to achieve accelerated results. It is a system that can be measured to the elementary and rudimentary piece of data that tells us if something is truth or not. It's about building a digital footprint over time. You notice it has little footprints on here, right? Because when you first start out, when you first build a website or buy a domain, you are an infant in Google's eyes. The longer you wait to take that step, your timeline is different from someone who came to the table and already had one. If it was built incorrectly, if it violated Google's compliance requirements, all of these things are going to modify your digital footprint. The more expansive your footprint is, the more opportunity you have. Essentially, every one of these items, when done in the right order, at the right time, produce a progressive result. When I say progressive result, what I mean is, you guys have to decide, define, what does result mean to you? And I will tell you, in this environment, you want to do everything you can to understand that results are defined as progress. Progress is measured with data, not feelings. Usually the initial feeling is not a great one, <laughs> okay? So, we have to do the right things in the right order at the right time. If any one of these elements are not done in the right order at the right time, the business can fail. At least this aspect of it, leveraging digital marketing to grow your business, can fail. If I have a website that was designed and developed and it's in violation of Google's requirements, and I go pay a company to do step number seven, search engine optimization, you lose. You can't optimize something that's in penalty. If I build a great website, but I have no content, no pages in the drawer, I can't get found for something that doesn't exist. Google's not a mind reader. It's a robot, in preparation, that crawls data in order to be able to determine, like Braille, who you are, what you do, where you do it, whether people like you, and should I make you an option. If I have a great website, great content, I'm on page one of Google, and my reviews are horrible or non-existent, you lose. If I have a great website, I'm on page one of Google, reviews are good, but the last time you posted content on your Facebook page was 2014, what do consumers think? Your business is what? Closed. Every piece of this roadmap is interdependent, interoperable, they work together. 
they have to be executed perfectly to be able to see progress in numbers. There? Okay. We're going to talk about step one first. Okay? Step one is infrastructure. Here's the worst part about getting started down this road. Infrastructure is not a money-making activity. It's a necessary activity for a business to put the infrastructure in place to run a business. Having the right systems, the right brand, all of these elements don't make you money, but they cost you money. That's a frustrating thing for a lot of entrepreneurs to spend without reward. First and foremost, domain registrar. This piece right here, buying your domain, that can cause you problems. You buy a .org and you're not a nonprofit, not a good idea. You buy a .ca, not a good idea. A .co, not a good idea. Google has what's called a preferred URL structure, and it is https colon forward slash forward slash www.blank.com. That's a preferred structure. So anything outside of that, a .net, any other framework, and it's already making your hill steeper. Next, email and hosting, website design, website hosting, security, maintenance, administration, making sure you have great phone systems so your CSRs can answer calls, making sure they're trained so they don't go AC. Huh? <laughs> Accounting systems, financial, CRM, ERP. A CRM is a contact relationship management system or a customer relationship management system. It's essentially your livelihood is data that you collect over the years. That data, if stored correctly, can be used, reused, manipulated, changed, modified. It can be put into action to do other things in the future. But a lot of times when companies start their business, they don't put these systems in place. And then in the future, when you want to start something like an email sequence, a text sequence, you want to implement some bot automation, all of these things are unavailable because the data doesn't exist in a format that you can grab. So, as you grow, having an ERP system, enterprise resource planning module, where now you have inventory management, now you have product sales, now you're looking at e-commerce, now you're offering subscriptions for filter delivery, in addition to your monthly maintenance program on a recurring invoice, automatically debited from a company's or from a, from someone's credit card. As you move, each one of these elements is going to make you faster. It's going to allow you to build a base of income, allow you to be able to have recurring revenue that you can live on during shoulder seasons. So, first and foremost, let me back up. When it comes to buying your domain name, how many people in here own a domain name right now? Who needs a domain name? Okay, so right now, take a picture of this slide. Purchasing your domain name through your main primary domain registrar, which technically should be Google. You're gonna learn really quick that Google is the, the the backbone and infrastructure of most of what you need to start and manage a business. Most. So you guys, I know how busy you are. I know how hard it is to run the business, do the work. You're, you're installing something, answering phones, paying bills. I understand what it is to be an entrepreneur, trust me. This allows you to keep everything in one location. If you have GoDaddy for your domain registrar, a different company for your email hosting, a different company for your web hosting, things start getting really messy. So keep it clean. This is where you're gonna buy your domain. If you buy domains from Namecheap, Cheap Host, uh, Bob's Domains, those are resellers of domains. One thing happens to them. Your domain is gone. Fighting for a lost domain because a reseller shut down is hard. Avoid it, don't do that. Go with Google. Next. Your email accounts. How many of you are using G Suite to manage your company email? Raise your hands. I got two. Okay, so you all need email. You can't go to market with at Hotmail, at Yahoo, at AOL, at Gmail on a business card today. You can't. It creates an immediate sense of mistrust with consumers. They wanna know your business. So through G Suite, 
you guys can set up, so it's the same login. You can set up your email accounts for your company inside G Suite. Your domain is also in Google, same, accounts.google.com. All your docs, your files, can also be stored in your G Suite account, which is a collaborative, collaborative secure environment that allows you to share, collaborate, send, make public, secure, any file, any document, any image. Later, we're going to talk about branding. Most of the time when we first set up a website, the first thing we need is, we need to know your branding guidelines. I will say one in a hundred dealers comes to the table properly set up with branding guidelines. Technically, it should be a folder sitting inside G Suite that says branding guidelines. And inside of there, you have your logos. Your logos are PSD files, meant they were built in Photoshop, not clip art. <laughs> We've seen it all, I promise you. <laughs> okay. Inside Photoshop, you have a vector file. That means it can blow up and get put on your truck. Later, you're going to need a truck wrap. You're going to need a sign. You might even be on a, the a back of a, a building. Okay. Inside your branding guidelines, you should have your PMS colors. You should have your HTML colors. You should have every single element that every other business you work with is required to use anytime they do something. And when you're set up in a collaborative sharing environment, when we need to work together, you go to your branding folder and you click share and you say jasminesiwebgroup.com and boom, she's moving. Right now we're spending weeks just trying to collect all the assets. Do you have a favicon? Do you have uh, an image that can show up on a black background, white background, transparent? Is it a block? Okay, so just little things. This allows you to not have to purchase servers. Hey, depending on who you're talking to, if you're talking to an old school IT guy, they're gonna come in and they're gonna recommend Microsoft Office Suite, SharePoint, servers in your office. They're gonna charge you a license for every single installation of Microsoft Office. You're gonna have to replace it over and over again. You're gonna spend a ton of money on servers, security, maintenance. That is $6 a month per user. You don't need that in today's environment. It's not necessary. You guys can move extremely quick, setting up an infrastructure in a matter of minutes and be able to do anything quickly. You guys need minutes back in your life because there's a lot of high leverage activities you should be doing, you're not doing because we're spending time on repetitive tasks. All right? Next, how many of you are set up on Google My Business? Grab your phones. Right now, <laughs> grab your phones. And I want you to type in my business in your apps. I want to make sure you have the app on your phone. It's a little store. Let's take a picture. It's got a house on it. It's blue. Google my business. Every one of you needs to have Google my business as an app on your phone. All of your technicians should also have it. It's under, good job, get that. That is what stores all of your data when you go to Google and you see your business on the map, that's where it comes from. It is the only free thing technically online that you can do. It's free. Every time you guys go search online, you see the map show up, yes? And there's three pack, three businesses showing typically. How many of you have Alexa or Google? Okay, you ever ask Alexa for something? Location, a restaurant, anything? That's where she's pulling the data from. I say she like she's a person. <laughs> I love her though. Okay. I miss her when I travel. Now I have a little echo dot. She's just not the same. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> My ADD is kicking it. So, the way this works, the more active you are, the higher you have a probability of showing up for local searches. Here's the reality. Whatever your physical business address is, you're stuck there for a minute. If you're trying to get found in 10 cities, you don't have a physical address, Google's not gonna give you credence or credibility outside of the area you have an address until you get this right. The more reviews, the more frequent the reviews, the more content, the more promotions, the more pictures, the more images, the more graphics, the more video, the more you do on that free app on your phone, the better your odds 
for increasing your rankings and getting found in the city you have an office. Now, how, is, does anyone in here have an office in a city they don't want to do business? Okay, good. I would have said tough. You have to master that city first in order to get any credibility outside of that, okay? You guys need to get used to becoming documentarians for your company. No one else is gonna do that for you. They're just not. As, as many companies as you call and try and outsource some stuff to, here's the reality. There is a certain amount of responsibility that is on your shoulders. If you don't do it, no one else is going to. There are a handful of things that are solely your responsibility. This is one of them. You need to be the producers of content. You guys are marketers right now. Not business owners, not technicians. You're marketers trying to grow a business. That piece, acquiring reviews, that's your job. Creating content, that's your job. Taking pictures, that's your job. Documenting the story of your business in a content, in a piece of, in a way that can be shared and permanently etched in the digital space, that's your job. It's not hard to take a selfie. It's not hard to take a picture of the office party. You need activity. Activity is a mathematical equation. Frequency of new content is highly measured by Google. Okay? Okay. It's free. You can make your money. All right. Still under the Google umbrella, analytics. Google Analytics, Google Webmaster, Google Data Studio, um, Google Marketing Platform. You live in this space, or should, as a business owner. The Google environment, once you get set up in G Suite, your business is now a domain inside G Suite. You have all of your documents in there. You have all your analytics. You're leveraging Data Studio, or hopefully your agency is for you. And this information tells the truthful story of what's happening, as long as you know how to read it. Also under the Google umbrella, is something really important. YouTube, same thing, same account, same domain, business profile, also under Google. You see I've created one email account for $6 and everything else so far is free. Everything. All right, this is not free. So, also under the Google umbrella, which you'll log in with the same email address. By the way, let me back up, okay? Inside a document, a Google Sheet, which is just like Excel, you guys need to get your passwords organized, seriously. <laughs> you need to make a list of everything you have in your business, and you need to start getting logins and passwords organized for a moment inside here. There is a vault that can manage all of that for you. Right now, when we want to move forward and do things that are progressive, we spend 99% of our time in the first 90 days trying to get people to show up for meetings, trying to get logins and passwords, trying to get access to things that are necessary, trying to figure out who you are, what do you want to be when you grow up, where is your brand. Get it all organized one time, and then all of the rest of your business is easy. Okay, we'll come back. This element, Google Local Service Ads, this launched when I was on stage, I was in California somewhere. I'm at an event. You guys seen the ads at the very top of Google, the Google local service ads? How many of you are, are currently listed in them? You're paying per call, okay. When that launched, the day it launched, I'm standing on a stage like this, there was about 500 people in the room, and Google took away Google Maps. Every business, that said, I don't need to worry about SEO or pay-per-click or anything else because I'm on Google Maps, I got enough business coming from that. Boom, phone shut off on that day. Because Google replaced it with a paid ad version of the Maps. Now it's became Google local service ads, the free Maps are back, but you need to be careful. That story is one of many I could tell you about why you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. Why your digital footprint needs to be big. Because things change. You cannot control when Google says, I don't like all your reviews, I'm gonna take them away. I think one of them is a hoax. You can fight it, but it takes time. Okay, next. 
Google Ads, pay-per-click. We're still in one G Suite account that gives us access to and administration rights of everything. You guys set this up right and you are now organized. From your phone or any device, you can flip-flop in between each one of these things literally in an icon in the top right corner. Quickly. Next. We're going to dive into uh, websites. About 99 and 100 websites in the HVAC industry are completely violating Google's requirements and set up for massive liability because they are insecure. That's not okay in today's environment. You see the news. <laughs> we have to care about our security. Google has a requirement. Your website has to be secured with an SSL certificate. That's a little lock in the corner. Everyone says, why does my website need to be secure? I'm not taking credit cards on my website. It doesn't matter. A, we have kids that do it for fun. <laughs> B, websites, bless you, that are insecure are set up as essentially deployment sites to be able to do other things that are not good. Every insecure website is effectively not something you should ever invest a penny into for marketing. It goes against everything to be in violation and then invest in marketing. So there's a little note right here or there's a lock. If it's an I, consumers are literally told this website is not secure. Don't put your information in there. That's not a good idea for a business owner trying to collect new leads and opportunities. It's a requirement. It's a fundamental requirement. <clears throat> All right? Every element of a website, if it's built with the brain, not flat, not like a picture. If you hire an advertising agency, they're going to design you a pretty graphic as if it was for print, throw it up on a website, call it a site. It has no brain. A single page website has no value because Google's just a giant filing drawer. If a website has a brain, it also requires maintenance, just like eating an air conditioning system. There are plugins, there are apps, there are third party feeds, there's lots of gadgets and gizmos that are all talking. They're going to break. What happens? Every website on the planet has something broke at all times. Maintenance, a team, is there to prioritize what's broke, what do we fix, what has the highest level of probability of hurting my results, and they constantly have to be juggling that. So when you're looking for hosting, hosting is a tiny little piece. That's like putting in an air conditioning system and never touching it. Put it in a garage. It requires maintenance, which is a team of people you have no appreciation for and never will <laughs> that do a lot of work to determine all the technical things that are broke, need fixed, prioritizing, further securing, blocking attacks. We have about a million attacks per minute on our websites. They don't get through because there's a whole team that does that. It's just a normal part of what we do every day. All right. So that was infrastructure technology. That was just getting set up. That's a, that is a bullet point list on a checklist of things that have to get done. Get set up with Google. Set up all your accounts for now and in the future. Download all those apps on your phone. Be able to share these assets with whoever you hire quickly. And now we have some of the infrastructure set up. Next is brand. So I'm not going to dive too far into this, but that's your list of what you need. It's simple. We need a word mark, icon mark, favicon, your colors, HTML color codes, one's for print, one's for web. Google fonts, branding guidelines, truck wrap, gear, shirts, magnet, bigness cards, signs, email signatures, these are all the fundamentals. If you make the checklist, it's easier to get it done in one shot. Just buckle down and go, let's knock this out. Okay? We can do this in a week. It's part of the day and night dealer elite program. So this is something that can be, be done very, very quickly. All right. So far we've talked about brand and technology, and we're going to move into websites. Before we do that, you guys tell me, what do you do when you need something? I'll stop the cheat sheet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we got handyman. <laughs> Is that you? Yeah. Okay. What do you guys do? Say it. Google it. You Google it. The entire world Googles what they need. That's what happens. Period. <laughs> Not period. 
They don't go to the shopping cart, raise the butt lid, and look on the bottom of the butt seat, right? Most of them are no longer opening a valve pack and digging through coupons, okay? They Google it. So if you know that every human does the same thing, they Google it, then the success of your business should be found on this. What do you want to sell? AC installation, AC repair, AC service, AC maintenance, AC tune-up, AC replacement, AC inspections, air conditioner installation, air conditioner service, air conditioner maintenance, air conditioner tune-up, air conditioner inspections, furnace. Someone that's from Washington, if their heater's broke, from they're from Washington State, what do they say? Want to guess? Or California? You know what, the, what do they say? They call it a heater. If you're from Seattle, Washington, you don't say furnace. That's something crazy. In Freddy Krueger's basement, it has fire. It eats small children. They are dangerous. <laughs> but if you're from Chicago, what do you say? Furnace, boiler, entirely different. And these people move around today. <laughs> I had a gentleman who sat in one of my classes. He was like, Jen. I could tell it was a client. He was just sitting on the edge of his seat, ready to tell me something. I was like, bring it. He was like, I don't know what you guys were thinking. You guys put on my website, geothermal. We don't do geothermal. Do you understand California and clay and this and that? And I was like, oh, oh, oh. I was like, well, well, why are you so upset? He was like, I've had four phone calls today for geothermal. We can't do geothermal. I was like, awesome. What'd you tell him? He said, I said, we can't do geothermal. I was like, awesome. What'd you do? He said, I scheduled him for something that we do do. And I was like, sit down. Awesome. <laughs> the initial reaction is not always the best one. Okay, <laughs> so people think differently. You guys try and argue sometimes, not you specifically, but in general, that maintenance and service might be the same thing, or repair and service might be the same thing, or installation and replacement is the same thing. Here's the deal. Google is a robot that evaluates what a human types into Google. So if they say Nest air conditioner Repair, guess what means something important to you? Nest air conditioning repair. I know it's illogical, but it's real. If they search for man cave air conditioning installation, they're like, no one does that. Yeah, actually, absolutely they do. They look for dispensaries, distilleries, wine cellars, basements, churches, I can go through the list. If they look for it, so this is, if you build it, they will come. Okay? Who looks for air conditioner inspection? Stop cheating, Jasmine. Dang. It's your account manager over here talking too much. <laughs> Who searches for inspections? Realtors. Why? Because they're working with the homeowner and an inspector wrote on an inspection report, you need to get your air conditioner inspected before our underwriters will clear the condition to close. So they Google AC inspection. How many of you have AC inspection on your website? Okay. So, you guys seen this movie? Okay. Every time someone goes to Google and they type something in, a giant file drawer opens up and flies across the entire warehouse. And inside it, there are thousands or millions or trillions of pages. What do you do when you need something? What do you do when you need something? Google it. When somebody searches online for AC repair in Bakersfield, California, what flies open? File cabinet. And what's inside the file cabinet? Lots of pages. You cannot get found for something that doesn't exist. You will not get found for something that is not in the first 10 pieces of paper at the front of that drawer, period. So here's another piece of rationale that really is not fun. The reality is when you first start paying for digital marketing, you are investing to not get found. It's a reality. There's lots of companies that will tell you it's not, but I'm gonna be the realist. <laughs> the reality is you're spending money in the beginning on something that you're not gonna get found for. That's real, it's data. You only get found once you're in the top 10 and then you gotta look the best when they get there. The logic is simple. What do you want to sell? I gave you a partial list. 
Where do you want to sell it? That is the city the consumer lives in, not a zip code. We're not in advertising. We're not thinking like an advertiser, thinking like a marketer. Zip codes are for print people, mailers and flyers. What do you do when you need something? Okay, so we're not thinking mailers and flyers. What do you want to sell? Where do you want to sell it? Are you an option on page one of Google? How many times are you an option on page one of Google? That increases your odds, because there's multiple places you can show up. And do you look the best when they get there? And will you allow them to communicate with you based on what they love, personal preference? How many of you love to text? Text messages, raise your hand. Look, text messages are like, whoop, whoop, that's me. How many of you would rather take a call and all you texters are jerks who are impersonal? See? Every, <laughs> but we can go through this a hundred different ways, right? People are passionate about Blackberry versus Android versus, <laughs> I don't have any Blackberries in the room, <laughs> versus iPhones. Like that turns into arguments at the kitchen table. It's almost on the no politics list. Okay, leave <laughs> that alone. <laughs> All right, so every time you go to Google and you do a search, remember that a file drawer flew open. How many pages do you have in that drawer for that single search and where are they located? That's the first mathematical equation that we need to process. You guys have access to unique things that we don't. I have a customer in California. He said, well, what about earthquake? Um, what was this? Earthquake, uh, what is it? Shut earthquake shut off valves. Totally didn't know you could shut off an earthquake first. <laughs> I was, huh? <laughs> Second, I had a client in, um, we have one in Poughkeepsie, New York, who does oil to gas conversions. Do you do that here? Probably not. These little unique topics allowed us to get them on page one of Google in 15 different cities for oil and gas conversions. That was his feeder for all his air conditioning and heating business. That's how he got in. Lower competition for, heat, for oil to gas conversions. It was lower, lower competition for earthquake shutoff valves. Just like I have a client in Vegas who's killing it because they're capitalizing on all of the incentives for having high efficiency system based on some TV commercial that came out about rebates in Vegas for high efficiency systems. He wound up tailgating right on the energy company. In Florida, energy companies are now competing with heating and air conditioning dealers. They're actually sending out a letter in their package saying you can get a new high efficiency air conditioning system for an additional $49 a month included in your bill. There's a lot of new things that are happening, but each one of these presents an opportunity. Some of these things are in your local area. You need to communicate with our team and we need to come up with a plan for those things that are more unique. The laundry list of things that are not unique, that are just basics, fundamentals, that's easy. There's over 600 different phrases most of you need. All right. What do you want to sell? You guys tell me. What do you want to sell? Okay. Pause. <laughs> Thank you for, I, saw, I felt that. We're getting there. Okay. Heating and air conditioning are two different companies. You guys are California, Arizona. What else do we have in here? Vegas. Anybody from Utah? So this is primarily California, Arizona. You have two different companies you run. And you have some shoulder season companies. And that's if you don't do plumbing or electrical or any other hot tubs or any other services. So humans are only hot or cold during the appropriate season. Everything else, you're trying to get them to be proactive, <laughs> right? Okay. So you never want to, to um, merge heating and air conditioning in the same bucket because technically they're two different times of the year, two different humans, two different searches. They're two different companies. No different than we don't want to call it heating and cooling because no one searches for cooling repair, cooling installation, cooling replacement. Sometimes what we know or say as, as normal phrases don't help us. So what do we want to sell? Give me one item. Air conditioning what? Air conditioning. 
All right, let's do this. Let's get off this presentation. Back, escape. Remember the drawer, right? Okay, I'm gonna make it bigger so you guys can see. Here's your logic. What do you want to sell? Where do you want to sell it? Are you an option? So I just did a search. What just opened? A giant filing cabinet. And inside that filing cabinet, there are how many pages? <laughs> too many. Too many. <laughs> That's too many. What do you want to sell? Bring it to me. Give me another version. Air conditioning service. Awesome. Now how many pages? Is it better? Still a lot. Still like, still, still, I'm like, my heart is beating fast. Out of it. <laughs> what do you want to sell? Give me another version. What do you want to sell? Where do you want to sell it? Installation. Okay, I'll switch it to installation. You only need to be in the top 10 to make any money. It's cool. It's all good. Let's go repair. What do you want to sell? Where do you want to sell it? Ooh, I love you. Ooh. Woohoo! You should give her five. Uh oh, I got P E I O. I have no clue. I know. Can I even get close? What is it? <laughs> Luckily, Google is giving me a, a nice little check there. How many pages in that drawer? Better? Watch. Okay, so you guys are entrepreneurs. Your job is to convert as much time to cash as you can as quickly as possible. So, depending on who you have advising you, if you sit down with the TM and they're like, oh, let's go after the biggest market, most competition, there's the most homeowners in this area, let's go after AC Repair, Phoenix, Arizona. I know who's in that area and they've been working at it a long time. <laughs> a long time. They have a lot of pages on, in their website. Somebody wanna give me a website to look at? Anyone? Can you make a better, it could be yours. Every single website, so you'll notice right here, if it was insecure, it would say, don't enter any information on your site. This is secure. But now, you guys have to do an inventory of the number of pages on your website, okay? I'm going to come back to this, so I'm not going to, my ADD will come back. Let me just pause for a second, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I know. What do you want to sell, okay? Pages on your website are like products in your store, okay? I'm going to come back to this, too. All right. Hey. If you can imagine your website is a store like a gas station. If you launch a store and you have five products on the shelf in your store, how much can you sell? That's it. There is a direct correlation between the total number of pages on a company's website and their annual sales. There is a direct correlation of the total number of pages, products in the store, on a website, store, and the total annual sales. Because Google is deaf and blind and can only read by Braille, text on the site. All right? You guys want to guess how many pages are on Amazon? Just because it's fun. Any takers on a guess? Check Home Depot. 
So earlier when I said, what do you want to sell? Someone said air conditioner. Air conditioner is an e-commerce based term. An e-commerce based term has different competitors. Who are the competitors for e-commerce based terms? Air conditioner, water heater, heat pump, furnace, heater. Who are the competitors for those? Is Home Depot? Is Amazon? Okay. Is Sears? They're not even in business, but their pages will live on forever in Google. <laughs> What's their budget for marketing? How many pages do they have on their website? Do you want to compete with that? So sometimes we have to have a reality check. It's really exciting. We're trying to get into the e-commerce game too. We're trying to go through and prepare for experiential e-commerce. The next generation who thinks they can buy anything off the internet, even if they know nothing about it, <laughs> right? including this giant box. <laughs> However, every one of you has a certain number of pages on your website, products in your store. For this site, this is Google saying, for KJ's Cool, you have 91 pages on your website. I know you don't have 91 pages of content. I don't think, I know a handful of people in here that actually have 91 pages of content. So there is a process when cash flow is limited. The reality is money's not grown on trees. And let do any of you have anything different? I know we got oranges, do we got cash? <laughs> because money's not grown on trees, the reality is, Paying someone to write content is hard. It's hard for agencies to find content writers because writing air conditioner or repair in Bakersville, California, 900 different ways is not a fun job. <laughs> no one likes that. You guys are technically the subject matter experts in your business. You've got to figure out a way to get what's in your head that you are willing to say like Groundhog's Day every day over and over and over. You wake up, you say the same thing. You wake up, you say the same thing. You've got to get what's in your head into a digital format so it can work for you while you go on vacation. It has to happen. I'm an entrepreneur. I struggle with it too. Right now, I don't know if you see how many mics I have on me, but we record everything because every ounce of content gives us a new digital asset to put inside the store that can work for me while I'm doing what I love doing, which is spending time with family and vacationing. I have to make copies of myself, but we as humans, we make excuses. I don't have time for that. Well, we have time to wake up and say the same thing every day. That's kind of an oxymoron, right? At some time, you got to buckle down and go, I don't want to work forever. I believe every entrepreneur in this room started their company for the same three reasons. You want more what? Number one. Money. Money. Perfect. What else? Time. What else? Freedom. Freedom. That's it. Everyone starts the exact same reasons. But then we get into business. We get into the rut of doing all the same things over and over and over again. And we don't buckle down and get the things done that we know we need to do in order to grow and step away from the business. I have clients who sat in a class with me five years ago and said, you're crazy. Because I said, when you start your business, write it down that you want to be able to take three months off during the middle of summer and not worry about the business. He gave me a psychotic laugh. Like, you're nuts, Jen. The great part was I had somebody in the class who started five years earlier and was like, I got four months off now. I listened. I don't have to come to work. I fish. And I check all of my math from my phone. It is my business. The data is accessible from anywhere. I am accessible from anywhere. Why? Because I made hundreds of copies of myself. When I have a new technician come in, they get trained via video. When I have a new customer service rep come in, they have a video series they go through. And then online tests. Everything I need to do to replicate what works best is in place. I fish. I love that. That's my favorite part about this whole thing. That's the story I want is you're like, I didn't have to come to work today. <laughs> that makes me happy. Okay. That was a large ADD moment. I'm going back to presentation. So we're going to back up a little bit. These are the fundamentals. Okay, your website is a store. Every page in your website is a product 
or service you want to sell. In a city, you want to sell it. Marketing, not advertising. I'm not talking about advertising right now. That's part of it. But marketing is the process of making those pages in that website visible when and where human beings look. Does that make sense? Yes? Can I get a thumbs up from yes? Okay. Right on. It's so much easier when it's simple. It's hard when it's complicated. <laughs> it's much easier when it's simple. Okay. So, when you're looking at growing the business, you guys are first going to start off with, what do you want to sell, where do you want to sell it, and you're going to have a smaller list because you've got to focus on your home base for many reasons. Because logistically, if you only have three technicians, driving 50 miles a day is not smart. You want to stay tight, real close to home. As your business grows and you bring in additional trucks and techs, then it's going to be important to deploy those assets from where they leave from. So if your trucks are set up to where they can deploy from home, then logistically, you're going to go after the cities in which they live. I'll give you the best example of that client of ours out of Washington State, <laughs> the prior marketing company was going after all of the cities in the San Juans, primary cities, the islands in the San Juan Islands. They were deploying their staff from Bellingham, Washington, and they were sitting in a ferry line for two hours, and then they were sitting on a ferry to go do a piece of work that their average ticket was $358 on. Not good. <laughs> okay. So, remember, right things, right time, right moment. We've got to execute these things in a perfect order, which means you've got to show up and participate. You've got to show up for those calls, those strategy sessions. You've got to communicate. Who do you have on your team? Where do they leave from? What areas are they willing to go after? What is your average ticket price for this? You guys in this room, how many of you are offering financing? Raise your hands high. How many are offering financing on 100% of the deals? I got one. So as a previous, I've, so my family has owned a real estate mortgage company for many, many, many years. From a legal standpoint, kind of important to offer it all the time. Because <laughs> just lending practices. For you guys, I know because we track data, the dealers who offer financing the most have the highest tickets for installation and replacement tickets. The dealers who offer financing the most. If they lead with financing first, their average sales ticket might be 13 to 18 grand for an installation and replacement, where the dealers who offer it less than 50% of the time might be six to eight grand, where the dealers who offer it not at all are $4,000 to $6,000 average ticket sizes for installations and replacements. Okay. That's important information for you to share with your marketing company. What is your average ticket size? How frequently are you offering financing? Do you have a goal for increasing ticket size? The more opportunities you have for inbound leads, the higher your tickets can go because you have more options. The lower amount of leads you have, the lower your pricing is because you cut deals to get business. All right. By city, by service, by product, by manufacturer, by location, by type, by job, by destination, by question, by category, by physical space in a home or business. When I said wine cellar, air conditioning installation, or humidifiers or dehumidifiers, all of these elements can broaden the space that you occupy for potential leads and opportunities. I showed you guys earlier how you can identify low competition phrases and get found on page one of Google faster than going after a huge opportunity and not showing up at all. If your business is in LA, physical LA, Los Angeles city proper, that is not fun. <laughs> That's just a bad day. That's very difficult to compete in that kind of area. And if you're brand new, that's worse. Mathematically, the numbers are not in your favor. And there's not a lot of companies that will tell you that. They'll give you a pipe dream, get you excited, you're ready to go. The reality is where you choose to house your business matters. 
because 100 percent of nothing is nothing right regardless of how big the pie is if you don't own any of it it doesn't help you we need you to make money on small items anything you can get ranked for now to bring cash in the company to be able to invest in other things later do that be cash first okay so content technically and i skipped over websites but i'll come back to that okay content everyone in here should have all your legal and copyright you can get away with it for a while but i'm not an attorney so if your attorney <laughs> was to tell you you should probably have your copyright privacy policies and all of your disclosures in this room knowing most of the websites i know two people that do all right <coughs> One page per service you want to sell. One page per city you want to sell it. One page per FAQ. One page per space you want to serve. One page per group you want to serve. Promotional content. Remember, what do you want to sell? Where do you want to sell it? Are you an option on page one at Google? And do you look the best when they get there? Is it easy for them to communicate with you via the apps they like? Some people like to call. Some people like to text. Some people want to schedule online. Okay. Your promotions matter. If you're sitting on page one of Google and your phone's not ringing, you don't look the best when they get there. And you don't look the best in a few different ways. If, if you're on page one of Google, if that check mark is done and the calls are not coming in, how do your reviews look? How does your social media accounts look? What do your promotions look like? Does someone have a promotion that's better? Are they giving away a Nest thermostat or air conditioning system? Or Nest thermostat or a thermostat with a, a bundle package? What are they doing that's making them more attractive? Are they offering financing first? Does it show financing is available? Because most people don't have $8,000 sitting in their bank account they want to spend on heating and air conditioning system. That's not a fun day. Vacation, new air conditioner. <laughs> right? Vacation. It's not fun. So. Every little piece, it matters. Do you have financing first? All right. So we've talked a little bit about branding tech, barely about the website. We'll come back. Content, we've definitely covered. Conversion systems. Every element you guys have to convert matters. Right now on your Google business listing, your Google Maps account. You guys have been to Google, you've done a search, the maps show up and somebody says closed, opens tomorrow at eight, right? So let's go back to you guys as homeowners. When do you guys as homeowners search for things related to your honey to do list at home? At night. At night. So you guys are a honey to do list service and most homeowners don't get to take care of it Monday through Friday, nine to five. So if your Google business listing and your website say you close at 501 and someone else is open, guess who gets the call? Someone who's open. So I'd rather see you not display it. The reality is you don't have to do the service at 9 p.m. You need to be available to take the appointment at 9 p.m. You need to be available to let this woman go to sleep at night because it's 2 o'clock in the morning and she's going through her little ping pong balls in her head of the 9,000 things she's got to do. And she's just trying to knock it off her checklist in the middle of the night. Do you have online scheduling? Do you let someone schedule a 20 minute meeting tomorrow on their lunch break to talk to you about what they need? I don't mean dispatching, two different sides of the business. Okay, do you allow texting? You guys right now, do me a favor, take your phones out and I'm gonna have you put in a phone number. Go to your text. And once you get text up, you're gonna text this phone number. It's 877 839 1122. 877 839 1122. And just type in the word Ferguson and hit send. Bless you. Save that number. That's CI Web Group's main office line. And you can reach our entire team, my watch is going off because <laughs> you're texting, our entire leadership team, our technical resources, all receive text messages on that number. You can ask anything. Somebody asked what the best zero gravity chair was at my last event and they got a link. <laughs> like, random. 
Okay, texting, allowing your, uh, allowing your consumers to be able to text you, wildly important. How many of you have a chatbot on your website? Chatbot. Here, you guys have seen online chats, right? How many of you love online chats? These little things down here. Raise your hand if you like working with online chats. Yes? The majority of the women, half of the men. Almost all women do. Why? Because we're multitaskers. <laughs> We have nine chats open. I got this appointment done. I got this appointment done. I paid this bill and I asked MS five questions. We're good to go. Done. <clears throat> when you guys have chat and you put a human behind it, your opportunity for error is massive. Because most of the time when dealers have chats on their website, they don't open it, they don't log in. You got to get to a certain stage before you man that appropriately. Chatbot is the ability to use neuro-linguistic pro processing or uh, language programming to make a system smarter. So I have the ability to communicate with this system. It already knows who I am. It already knows my phone number. I, as a consumer, haven't typed anything. Right now it's typing back. That is not a human. This thing has the ability to ask me a question, what's wrong, it can troubleshoot issues, troubleshoot problems, it can get a review, it can coordinate uh, an appointment, it can schedule for me, it can take a payment, it can check the SARE calculation, possible savings for a higher efficiency system, and it can take financing application. Without humans, there are some people who wanna be able to work independently on their home honey to-do list, on their task list, without having to talk to you. Let them do it. And you don't have to pay humans to be able to do that. Okay? In fact, the conversion ratio and the odds go up when it's not. All of these different items are ways to convert, ways to get con people, consumers, to take action. So having, making sure you're financing first, the apply online, click to call, call tracking, contact us forms, CRM systems, online scheduling, AI chatbots, man chatbots, texting, reviews, newsletters, buy now, my account, my... Um, my promotions, my appointments. All of those things allow people to do business with your website without having to talk to you. That's important in today's environment. All right. Next. This is the actual la laundry list of different kinds of conversions. The more conversion opportunities you have, the bigger your footprint, the more business you're doing. You don't have to do them all at once, but you do have to keep adding to grow. If you keep doing the same thing, the reality is, whatever you're doing today, if you continue to do the exact same thing, you're gonna get the exact same results and eventually your results will go down because people around you are doing more. That's math. All right, next, local marketing. So, let me just pause on this for a minute. So far, we're still on infrastructure. Step number four, now we're talking about marketing. Now we're talking about taking the content, the website, the conversion systems, the brand, and making it visible to humans. We just got to marketing. So, here's the beauty. That's not. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Once you understand the mathematics, behind the reality of marketing, you can predict the future. I have the ability, our team, anybody who has the data, has the ability to look for any service someone would search for, city they would search for it, and look at how many people are looking for it. That's a number. So if you go launch in a new city, and there's only 400 searches per month, and you're expecting to do $50,000 per month in that area, that's not real, right? This is part of setting clarity or the original expectations is understanding for each service and city combination, what are the total monthly searches? The reality is they're a lot less than most people think, which means we need a broader base of different kinds of searches in different kinds of cities. Based on the total number of searches, there is an impression share. 
based on how many positions you own on page one of Google, the percent of eyeballs seeing your company as an option changes. If you are on page one of Google in the organic area and you're number eight, versus if you're number one and you're on the Google map and you have an ad and you're in the LSA, the percentage or the Google, Google ads, local service ads, the percentage of eyeballs from that search goes up. Does that make sense? The percent of people who have the opportunity to even see you goes up. If you have a click-through rate of 3%, you can literally project the, predict the future. I know there are 10 searches in this area for this search term. I know that my percent or impression rate, the percent of people that see my company is X percent. I know 3% of those people will click to my website. I know X percent of those people will leave, bounce. That's a bounce rate. I know X percent of those people will take action, convert. They move from suspect to prospect. And I know that my CSRs and technicians convert to customer X percent of those. And I know for that service in that city, my average ticket price is X my average margin is X. I know how much money I can make in any city, anywhere, anytime. Does that make sense? Okay. When you're first starting out, we're not there yet, <laughs> right? Because you got a long ways to climb. If there's a million pages in front of you, you need to be in the top 10 of those million. You only have a couple ways to get there. You could pay for it, you could earn it. Pay for it, paid ads and LSAs. Earn it, SEO and Google business listing if you have a business verified in that city. Otherwise, it's not an option. That's the reality of your options. What do you want to sell? Where do you want to sell it? Are you on option on page one of Google? How many people are looking for it? Of the people looking for it, what percent of the share do you get eyeballs looking at your company? Are you represented on Google local service ads, Google AdWords? Google Maps, and in the top 10 first page results, SEO. Of that, what is your click-through rate? How good is your promotion? Do you offer financing? Do you have the best discounts? Do you have the best promotions? Is it easy for you to be able to convert? How many people leave? Bounce. How many people take action? They text, they call, they schedule, they chat. They fill out a web form. How many of you love filling out web forms? Contact us form. Zero, but everyone in here has a contact us form on their website. It's the primary form on every single website and not any audience or any focus group likes to fill out that form. There's lots of oxymorons that don't help. <laughs> okay? All right. Are we making sense? I know it's a lot and I know it's complicated, but hopefully it's starting to light bulb moments. Okay. The bottom line is with this, the internet is better when you own it. Until then, you gotta work for your business. Until then, you need to be calling your database. Until then, you need to use your local church group. Until then, you need to join a BNI or a chamber. Until then, you need to do local marketing in your local area. Until then, you need to attend all your kids' sports games and wear your t-shirt with your brand on it. Until then, you need to shake hands and hobnob with people in your area to grow the business. Until then, you need to be an entrepreneurial hustler that knows how to grow a business before you have the presence digitally, before you own the internet. You have to work for the business. You've got to hustle. We are all the same. I've done it, I've been through lots of Nikes, <laughs> okay? We've all hustled, but it's a reality. If you don't own the internet, then there's other things you have to do. That will come if you work at it. All right. Here's the reality when it comes to data, okay? If everything was perfect, which it is not, you wouldn't be growing, okay? In this space on the side where we have, let me come over here, I'm not ignoring you guys, okay? In this space, 
20? All right. There are humans in boats above the water looking for AC repair, AC installation, AC maintenance, air conditioner installation, air conditioner replacement, and so forth. Financing, cost, warranty, timeline, best, worst, reviews. There's humans looking for stuff. They're above the fold. If you're not an option above the fold, your visibility rate is low, you gotta go hunt for humans, you go fishing. <laughs> As your visibility rate increases because you have solid infrastructure, you have content, you have pages in the drawer for the services you wanna sell, you wanna get found for, there's products in the store that you wanna to take to market. And you are implementing marketing activities and techniques to increase your numbers, to create progress. And when I say be careful of results, the term you mentally attach to the term results can hurt you because it can cause you to start over. And I know a lot of heating and air conditioning and contracting companies who associate the wrong term with the term results. They don't associate project pro progress. They associate, right now my phone should be ringing off the hook. Why not? I just bought a domain. I've only been online for, or I've been online for a full year. I should be in the top 10 of six million other pages, right? It takes a minute. Study the numbers, watch for progress. As you see progress, if you have a good marketing company, you're always gonna have a percent of what you're working on below the fold because that means they're working on something new. If everything was above the fold, your numbers on your cash flow report and your profitability and your balance sheet are going to be identical year over year over year. Make sense? You have to have things you're working on at all times. That's what creates growth. You guys, when you sit down with your marketing rep, you want to have an agenda item that has three things on it. What are we doing that's working? Show me the math. Show me the progress. Do more of that. What are we doing that's not working? Let's reallocate it to something else or give it more time. Those are your choices. And the biggest, most important element everyone has to have for growth is what's next? There's no story I haven't seen. We have thousands of entrepreneurs that we know the math. I can tell you by meeting a human how quickly they're gonna grow because half of this is personality. Half of this is if you show up to meetings. Half of this is if you fill out, share information Half of it is the relationship, it's how you think. Half of it is if you come with your capacity completely full, not ready for new information, versus you come ready to learn, and let's do something different. Okay, so be careful what you wish for. If everything on your reports was perfect, which I hear a lot of people want, it means nothing new is happening. You want to balance. All right. Local. So, I'm just gonna take you to a report because it's a lot easier. Let's go to a live report. So, essentially, what local listings is, is a directory of thousands of other websites that you have the ability to get listed on. Just because you're not subscribed doesn't mean you're not listed. Because those companies, their business model is to set you up with inaccurate information in a hope that you will call and ask to correct it and they can pitch you on their 250 a month plan. That's number one. That's real. So as long as we know something's real, we can't be mad at it, it's just real. It is what it is. So now what do we do, right? Number two, when they set your listing up, it's located as an unclaimed listing. Slick marketing companies and competitors can go claim your listing, put their contact information, your company name, your brand, their phone number, and they can happily answer your calls as long as you choose not to claim your own listings. That happens every day. No matter what anybody has said, these are real dealers. So I just pulled a quick report that has 104 dealers. I pulled a hodgepodge of them all over the United States so you can see the data regardless of where they are. 
even when they say that they have a local marketing plan, we've never had anybody come in that's doing what's necessary in order to grow this. Not seen it once. Having your valid information, correct information on those thousands of local directories, that's the basics. The way things take root, get found, increase visibility, get ranked, is through activity. Those are updates. Right here, we've done 193,000 updates, adding content, adding pictures. What I told you guys to do on those Google business apps, same process. What I told you to do on your website, same process. New content, pictures, graphics, images, posts, videos. Content is king. It's what creates momentum, visibility. Google wants to know, are you relevant? That is, are you relevant to what people are looking for? Are you trusted? Which is, do other people and other websites trust you? Form of reviews and directory listings from quality sites. And are you current? It's the frequency of new content being published. A stale website with no new content is hard to grow. It's hard. We work hard at it <laughs> all the time. It's hard to get content, too. <laughs> so, but what grows is through activity. All right. The reason local listings are so important, one, because you need to own your, own your, uh, you need to own your business, your brand, on all of these directories, but the other reason is, when Google is identifying your website to determine if you're quality, what it's looking at is third-party endorsement. Third-party endorsement comes from something called links or backlinks. That is, other quality websites with a link to your website, preferably on an interior page, that has a higher value. The greater number of backlinks you have from third-party websites pointing to your site, the higher your rankings go. It's a mathematical equation. You can't fake it, and we cannot do it fast. You do it fast, it's fake, then you're penalized. So the time and when you decide you want to start marketing, whatever it is, it is. <laughs> we just deal with it, right? If you don't have a URL with a lot of backlinks and you get started, for example, in the Day and Night program, in the Dealer Elite program, it's going to take you a little longer than someone who we've been building backlinks for for the last five years. Make sense? Okay. I'm going to pause for a second because I know we're low on time. So essentially, you guys, as a part of becoming an elite dealer, you have packages in here. There's, I think, four, Clay, different programs. Essentially, what we've done, working closely with Day and Night and Ferguson, is to take as many of these elementary infrastructure elements and combine them in a plan where for a small annual investment from you guys, you get a lot of the infrastructure stuff out of the way. There's obviously a lot more you could do. And you should. You should earn accrual funds. You should increase your sales. You should invest in other things. But in the beginning, those programs include a lot of the infrastructure pieces. One of those that is included is a website. Not a website, but a website that's rebuilt. Is Elite in here? No? How many times have we re rebuilt their site? Twice. I think it's three. First one and then rebuilt twice. So these things do not last forever. Websites don't last forever. Code changes, technology requirements changes, new gadgets and gizmos, displays, everything changes. Google retires. Search engines retire certain kind of code sets. They don't use them anymore. They make iframes um, or they make, um, what's the old video they used to play on the websites that doesn't play anymore? Flash? Yeah. Flashlight. That's gone, right? Okay, PHP 5, that's gone. So they retire different technology. So one of the benefits of this program is and I don't know anybody else that does this, you guys get a website built on current standards with all of the functionality you need inside of it, and it's rebuilt anytime Google does a major change that requires it, necessitates it, or every two years, whichever comes first. Inside this, when you guys are coming to the table, most of the time you're not coming to the table with a lot of content. So 
Ferguson provides six pages of content right out of the gate to cover at least the basics for air conditioning and heating. We build all of the pages for the primary services we know you need if you have content or not. We use picture, we use video, we use assets from the day and night program to be able to build out those pages. Would they perform better with actual real text, written content? Absolutely. But in the beginning, what we're trying to do is have each one of you launch your very first site with around 100 pages, somewhere between 90 and 100 pages. Because the average entrepreneur launches with five and makes no progress for a very long time. So we try and launch sooner with a lot more information. Try and drag out promotions, make sure there's a reviews area. We build resource center, and inside this resource center, we build different gadgets and gizmos that help you guys sell. So this is a SARE calculator. Helps you guys and your team be able to determine what potential energy savings is. You tie this into a financing option, and now you have something that can help you guys sell. We also build in different applications, such as a troubleshooting system. Everything we've built has came because something happened that made us learn from it. So in the beginning, the first year that we built these sites, we learned that most of the negative reviews that were coming in was because somebody went on a job, changed the battery in a thermostat, and got a negative review. You can't just get rid of negative reviews. So we need to avoid those. So we built a troubleshooting system that allows a consumer to basically bookmark a site, try and troubleshoot simple things to try and avoid those negative reviews. It turned into human beings bookmarking HVAC sites, which is an odd number that's hard to get somebody to do. <laughs> and then this is what turned into eventually the chat bot that I showed you a little bit ago. All right. <clears throat> Other things that we built into the site is terminology. This continues to expand. It grows every year. Every time our clients give feedback of new terms that are used. The beauty is anytime any of these words are used or acronyms are used anywhere on the site, it automatically shows what the terminology is of that word through the rest of the site. So the site is getting smarter over time. And then also inside the resource area, uh, we built an FAQ page. This continues to grow. So the simple things that you guys have to answer on a regular basis, essentially we're trying to build a library that makes it a lot easier for you guys. Also inside of here is an entire CRM system that allows you to capture data from day one. The ability to have somebody fill out a form, click to call, uh, it has a My Account area, it tracks all of appointments, so someone can request an appointment online, they can log into their account, you can share documents back and forth. I have one client <coughs> in particular that's using the system who is now to the point where they're having consumers drop five images inside the CRM system. It's like a picture of the label on the front of a furnace and a picture of something, something, and something. And he's able to give online estimates, quotes, within $300 of the actual without driving anywhere. He's mastered it. And he's doing a really good job at it. So that's a new business model that comes just from t having technology to do those things. All right. Every single one of these pages has a label. So this label is Ductless HVAC Services in Bakersfield, California. You only have a certain amount of room to label every page on your website. That label is what goes into Google, into this what, filing drawer, that has how many pages? 56,000. You have your AdWords, or Google Ads at the top. There's no local service ads for this. Then you have Google Maps. <clears throat> and then you have organic rankings. This is our client, 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 this is our client. Eight of those options are our client. The reason that's important is you guys in this room have a unique opportunity to not compete against each other, but rather to win together. When you have two agencies fighting over the same space, they do things to hurt the other's website in order to move up on top of them. If you guys can own and occupy page one of Google, you already have competitors. At this point, 
Let the consumer decide. But you guys own it together. Own and occupy the space for the services you want to sell in the cities you want to sell it and collaborate instead of compete. And I'm telling you, you guys can make a tremendous amount of progress when you're focused on moving forward, making progress, instead of playing defense all the time. We have other areas and pockets of the United States and Canada where there's only three marketing agencies that are the best heating and air conditioning marketing companies in the industry. There's just three. Those three compete all the time. They get a little evil. <laughs> because there's only page one, position one available. They're trying to take it. They have two ways to take it. They can earn it and they can help somebody else's site go down. You want to get into a position where you guys are continuing to make progress. What time is it? 9.34. How long? 10? All right. Good deal. Okay. Let me just do it. I'll give you this real quick. <clears throat> so this website's actually old. When did this go live? This year? Or 19? And it's already old. The design of this, the framework that we built this site in, we've already, re already retired these frameworks. We're already ready to launch the 2020 frameworks. Every single year we build a framework for a heating and air conditioning company to market their business. We retire that framework, we get started on the next one. Why? Because the data teaches us to do something better. No website we have has ever lasted or stayed, I should say we don't let them last, longer than 18 to 24 months. Technology changes too fast. The data shows too much information that should make us, as a business owner and agency, make a decision to do something different, to improve it. <clears throat> when you first get started, you don't have the data to tweak and make changes in your first six months. When you hit that six months mark and you've been tracking data and you have some history and we can see how consumers, we have a heat map on the site, we can tell where they land, where they convert, what they click on, what they don't cl click on, where they bounce, where they take action. Every one of those elements you can see when you have a little bit of history. Then you want to get a call from Jasmine. I always say she's like a chihuahua at your back door. Open, 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 open. Please come to my meeting. Please come to my meeting. You guys know? <laughs> I'm sorry, and she's here. <laughs> and they're all agreeing with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a good thing. You don't hire a personal trainer so that they let you just sit at home and do nothing, right? That's what she's good at. <laughs> so she's going to continue to pester you until you show up, and her agenda and her mind is going to be, what are we doing that's working? Let's go over that. And she's gonna make a rec recommendation. You should do more of that. What are we doing that's not? We're gonna change things up. And what's next? What are you not doing yet that you should, you should be doing? So as we build these engines, every element changes over time. Let me give you an example. Oops. All right. Do you guys remember <clears throat> who was here last year? Okay, I don't know if you guys remember, I was telling you that um, Google had launched schematic markup as a part of their mobile first environment. So two, three years ago now it was uh, you needed a responsive website. Then responsive websites, that was retired, now you need a mobile first website. That's right now. The website needs to be AMP compliant, which is accelerated mobile pages compliant. It needs to be schematic markup requirements. <clears throat> Long story short, without being too big of a nerd, having your website showcase your reviews, a year ago, every review company, well, I shouldn't say that, a large list of review companies that were allowing you to acquire reviews and the schematic markup on the websites was allowing review data to be able to be showcased in a SERP listing, search engine results pages listing. Now, with the most recent changes, Google has eliminated 
many, many, many of the review systems or review acquisition companies from being able to display their review listings in a valid search ranking so that those reviews, these things come and go. So a review system application or a, a software you might have been using to acquire reviews two years ago may have done X, Y, and Z for you. But when Google makes a requirement change and the schematic markup changes and they remove those review systems from showcasing that data, you might need to switch review systems. That was an option for a period of time. Two years ago, I stood on this stage. Was it, were we here today? Yes, we were. I stood on this stage and I said, you have the largest competitive advantage available right now. Right now, we have the ability to show star rankings on every page on your entire website. That was huge because when search results came up, when a human goes to Google and types something in, all these pages showed up on Google and you were the only one that showed up with 200 stars. Those got the majority of the clicks. When Google changes those requirements, that goes away. We got to rethink our strategy. So you guys, part of this is being flexible and understanding that, man, I live in this environment. And the number of changes that happen on a regular basis, it's massive. It happens all the time. So you've got to be ebb and flow. When, when we say you have an advantage to be able to take advantage of something like that, you only had a 24-month window for that. Now, you can only acquire that from a very, very select sequence of actions without having any kind of liability for penalty. That's the reviews element. <clears throat> this piece, how you acquire reviews, where you display reviews, where you remarket reviews matters. They're not all, all treated equal. You can use reviews to help with other initiatives. For example, if you acquire reviews, display them on your website, by city you did the work, you now have city page content on a regular basis tied to reviews, which is wildly important. And now you can start using getting a review as an opportunity to get found in a new city. That's a smart move. If you're acquiring reviews and sending them to Yelp, anybody had a good experience there? <clears throat> I'm recording, so I'm gonna just delay that conversation for a hallway. <laughs> if you are acquiring reviews and you're sending them to HomeAdvisor, they're invisible. You guys should be getting reviews, number one, on your Google business listing. That's priority. Why? Because Google is God in this environment, makes a lot of decisions. Number two, on your website. Why? Because that is your asset. You own that. That's your home base. And because it can help your website get ranked in other cities if it's displayed properly. And it can help you on the search engines convert or get consumers to take more actions once you are an option on page one at Google, if it's done right. All right. Social, I'm going to skip. Here's the bottom line on social. <clears throat> Man. You have to have current content, has to be branded well. This is not a huge deal right now. There are very few people in this room, I can count them on one hand, who need to be going highly aggressive on social media right now. Remember, you gotta do the right things in the right order at the right time. Most of you don't have the fundamentals in place to be able to go spend time learning how to tweet from some twit. Not important right now. <laughs> Might be in the future, but not right now. If you listen to a social media expert or even my own social media team, they will convince you otherwise because they are not an entrepreneur dealing with a limited amount of cash, time, and money. <laughs> you guys, you gotta buckle down and focus on those things that can make the most amount of progress quickly. This is not one of them. Necessary evil, you gotta have it moving. You can use your own personal networks and social to build the business when you first start if you're not ranking on page one of Google. Your personal network. But a Facebook business page in the beginning is not gonna make you a ton of money, it's not. And you don't need to be burning through cash on things that are temporary. So let me put things in perspective. Do you guys consider yourself entrepreneurs? Yes? Say yes, like with passion. Like yes, I'm an entrepreneur. I am an investor in my business. I will protect and leverage my time, money, relationships, freedom, and network. 
Which means, I will go into this with clarity that I understand the difference between advertising, i.e. throwing money on a blackjack table and praying it produces more on the other end, or invest money in permanent assets, things that produce compounding results over time, or in boasting my ego, branding, making me feel better about who I am because I see myself everywhere. <laughs> There's a difference. All of them wildly important, not all at the same time. Permanent investments in your business, i.e. investing in marketing assets that create a permanent compounding interest impact on your business, wildly important. The dollar I spend today is worth more years from now. You guys tell me, that video camera, this video camera, this screen recording, saw another one, <clears throat> are those temporary or permanent? If I put it in YouTube, what is it? Permanent. What is it worth to me a year from now? What am I going to have more of? Views. If I buy a TV commercial, what is it? Temporary. Temporary. When I stop spending, run out of cash, campaign closes, I have what? I'm right where I started. That hamster wheel can impact every business. Some people have excess cash. They're to the point where they have funds they can throw at advertising things, things that are not permanent, because they have the money available to do that. Because they have a promotion that has a start date and an end date, they want to test a market. Because they're trying to go after something that's wildly competitive, they can't get there organically, so they're going to use ad money in order to get there and they're going to pay for it. Sometime everyone hopefully is going to get to the point where I have enough free money to go throw it on a blackjack table. Right? But most business owners, when they're first starting, need to invest in those things that are permanent. The challenge with it, mentally, it takes longer to grow a business. It doesn't feel the same as sitting out at the table, tossing down 100 bucks, walking up to your room with 600. Advertising. Has about the same odds as a blackjack table. Right? So, both are important, but not to everyone at the same time. Not yet. Social is similar to that. All right? Knowing the difference between permanent and temporary, that's going to be wildly important. SEO, we've been talking about that. Essentially, everything we've been talking, up, talking about up to this point, we just accomplished the majority of what's required for search engine optimization. Great website, built properly, current, relevant, content, secure. Uh, schematic markup, AMP, accelerated mobile pages, all of these little nerd things are all tied together. Local listings, social media, and congratulations, we're halfway to SEO. Advertising, that's the list. Anything where you pay money and when you stop paying, you're right where you started. That's all it is. That's it. Just know in, go into it with the eyes wide open, knowing what it is. Content, we'll drill in. So, <clears throat> content is on here twice. If you notice, step two is content, but so is step nine. Because step two is content for infrastructure, the basics of what do you want to sell, where you want to sell it. Content outreach, the ongoing content development is what continues the business growing. Continuing to add content, build your digital footprint, add more pages to your website. I know the dealers that have 600 pages on their website are doing 20 million a year when optimized correctly and when their reviews are on point and in the right place. And I know the dealers with 25 pages on their website. And I know they're doing less than a quarter million in sales. It's mathematical. We've got thousands of examples to look at to show that the math is simple. The more products you put in the store, the better optimized they are, the more popular they are, the more money you, are, you make because your visibility rate is higher. All right, <clears throat> retention, step 10. At some point in your business, you get to a point where you need to concentrate on leveraging your current database. That's what this stage is for. You have to have a database to do that. We're gonna talk about that in the next session. And the final stage, we have other industries that master all 12 steps and all 12 stages. In the heating and air conditioning industry, it's a little far behind. Okay, the final step is you want to create an app that keeps your clients off of Google. You don't want your customers on Google. 
you don't want to have to advertise. Eventually, you want to be just like the bank that has an app on the phone. When they need something, they pull it out. What do they have? Their home services app. What's in it? The top 20, 30, 50 providers of home services in that area, one per area. You own the heating and air conditioning piece of that pie. You have a plumber, electrician, a roofer, a windows guy, an appliance guy. You have everyone else all handing out the same app. You are cross-marketing each other's business and keeping all those consumers off of Google, off of a national sales list, and you're focusing solely on a local marketing system inside an app. That's where we want to get to. Okay, with that, <clears throat> every piece of the pie that you don't do, it just shrinks your opportunity. Every piece of the pie that you have, your opportunity is increased. So that's all it is. It's contracting or, or not. <clears throat> You guys just have to decide how aggressive you want to be. With that, if you are interested in taking the leap and jumping into uh, the program as, a, as a, a elite dealer, there's different levels. Definitely, Clay's right there. Jasmine's right there. Uh, <clears throat> please, please, please um, take time to visit with them. Let's get going. The year's going to go by fast. Once you get started in this, there's a lot of upfront work that needs to take place. We'd love to be able to help you. There's lots of clients we have in the room that are in this process somewhere. Some are much further than others. Um, but if you guys are interested, we'd love to talk to you. Otherwise, did you learn something? Fantastic. So my fellow nerd and I will retire to the nerdery, and I'm going to invite a different one. <laughs> uh, diversified robotics. You ready to roll? Thank you guys very much.